Hey guys, I got quite a few requests from you for me to do a video on how I paint my dragon. So I decided I'd sit down and go over exactly how I paint these things. Um, I took a piece of cardboard here and I put a bunch of scales on it. These scales are done in cloth mache. I put some scales that are done in the paper mache clay. And I got some plates here. These are cloth mache also and I put some uh, paper towels on this side and this is cloth mache to get some textures in here so I'll go over painting these and I figured I'd go uh, split this up in some different areas and then I would do different colors in different areas I'll do a black here a green here red here and just split it all up so I show you the different ways I paint with the different colors um, the first thing I do when I paint these things is I get the black primer. This is a black primer I get it at. It's Krylon black primer. I get it at Michael's. And that's the first thing I do is spray this down with black. Uh, when I, my first couple dragons, I painted them. I didn't prime them. And I painted over on top of the white. And I noticed no matter how many times I went over it, you would always miss a spot. There's always a little crevice in there. And at the right angle, you can see it's not does not have paint on it. And that really bugged me. So some of the things I did to alleviate that is I will take black paint uh, like this, or it's usually the cheaper paint I use for that, you know, the dollar, the big bottle. And I will mix that in with my Elmer's glue when I do the cloth mache. So when you put it on there, it will dry black. And you guys notice on some of my videos, there are areas that I put a black cloth on there. That's just glue mixed with black paint. So the areas underneath, like these little holes here on this thing, when you look up in there, it's hard to get your paintbrush up in some of these areas. So that just alleviates areas that, that will be white and not have paint on them. So if it's black, it looks like it's in shadow. And if it's, in, if it's a shadow, it doesn't, you don't notice it as much, but you do notice the white a lot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to spray it down with my black primer. And then uh, we'll go pick some colors out. I'll show you where I keep all. I got a whole uh, shelf full of paints. I'll show you what paints I use. And then I'll set it up and you can, I'll, I won't speed this up at all. I know a lot of you guys don't like it when I speed up my uh, the time lapse on there, but... When I do it with time lapse, it saves a lot of uh, storage on my phone because I record all these things on my phone. So I will get the paint, the prime in, and then we'll start painting this thing. Okay, now I've hit the thing with black primer, as you can tell. First thing I would do before painting is like look at all the areas where it, the black primer didn't hit. So like there are some areas under here and there's not black or whatever. When you look at these, sometimes you can get to an angle where you can see up the scale. You're like, oh no, look white. Crap. So I'll go through and hit it with the black. I'll just get some black paint and, you know, hit those areas that the sprayer missed. So, so like right here, there's a hole where the sprayer missed up in here. You can see that where that looks white. See that in there? Because most of what I do is a lot, kind of, a lot of dry brushing. The brush isn't totally dry, what I do. Up in there always gets like that also. It's not always totally dry, but I, I don't usually push paint down in there. The, the technique I'm going for is, is I want to keep a lot of the black inside like these dimples and stuff I want to keep a lot of that black in there so I'll just lightly brush over take the brush and just brush over it like this that way I hit these areas I'll show you and that black will stay up in there sometimes I'll go back and get more in there just depends on how I'm doing okay so I use a lot of different types of paint I like the uh, I've got some of this stuff I got like for the green dragon, I use this Artist Loft stuff. My latest green dragon. I like the way this stuff 
works I've used. I use a lot of the Craft Smart stuff. This is all from Michaels here. You know, the Craft Smart. This is a cheaper paint. So I got some, I needed some more green and I had got some of these basics. And I like the way this red is. This red looks really good. So, um, I got some like that and I mix them in with the craft smarts and some of the cheaper stuff so my green dragon is mainly the big green dragon I did it's mainly just these two colors yellow and, and green just mix different uh, can, uh, just mix differently and I'd, on the wing of the dragon and the spine I used the orange um, my red dragons are mainly red of course the black just mainly red yellow sometimes a little bit of orange but when you mix these two together you get orange anyway <clears throat> you'll get some orange but basically just these two colors uh, my blue dragon I painted with a bunch of these what I, I wanted it to be like a water dragon so I hit it with a dark blue and then of course sometimes I mix a little white in there with it to lighten it up mainly dark blue but then I wanted it to have a sheen like um a water dragon or like scales you know how scales have a shine on them so i got some metallic and finally uh the last thing i put on there was the metallic paint to give it that uh metallic look to shine on there uh, my black dragons are mainly black you know but mainly black and i use this black also but my black dragon is mainly black, and when I highlight them, I highlight them in different browns. I'll hit it with black, and then I'll start uh, with a different browns, and, and I'll layer the browns over top of them. <clears throat> and that's how I get that look. So, basically, that's like, I've done a white dragon, too, with pretty much white. I really, I'll probably maybe do that over here. What I did was put a white and I put a blue wash over top of that, but we can try that also. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this up and I'll do you know some some blue here or some green here, some red, and the horns. I usually make my horns black on a lot of my dragons, but of course using the gray, uh, the browns and grays. And a lot of the spine, or the spine or the stomachs I do are either yellow or tan and you know the tans there and I'll show you that so that's basically those are the paints I usually use they're not expensive paints a lot of them are cheap I know the uh, this apple barrel brand that's from Walmart I just kind of like the way this pavement looked so I grabbed it um, Americana this is Hobby Lobby Craft Marts Michaels so it's basically from all over I think um, I got some from Joanne Fabric also. It just depends when I, I go to the art store, I'll go to the paint aisle and pick up paint. There's a lot of times I don't need it, but sometimes I do. A couple of these are kind of, they're getting kind of, this one doesn't have a whole lot in it at all. But anyway, I'll put the camera up, stop talking, and, and I'll go through and start painting some stuff. All right, when I do this, I like using stiff brushes some of these are a little softer than others but I like a stiff brush so that it doesn't get down in those grooves as well so when I hit it the paint stays on top and this one's got like a I didn't wash this very well it's got a stiff piece in it <sighs> so I guess we'll start with the uh, some green dragon stuff. I'll do some green dragon right here, right? So basically I just use, I had a palette I was using. I got tired of cleaning it, so I just grabbed some paper plates. We'll start out with just the regular green here. You know, just green right from the tube. And you know, you hit the paint, load the bristles up there, but then you know, wipe some off. You don't, you just want to hit the top of it. So, basically, how I do it is just kind of hit it with some paint like this, just 
just a light, light brush. See, see how you can see all the, you're not getting all that black in there. You just want some of that black to stay in there. Now, this is probably not how you're supposed to paint. I've, I've took some art classes. I've never taken <clears throat> a professional painting class, so this is probably not what you're supposed to do, but this is the technique I I like for my dragons. You know, dragons aren't real. You can paint them any way you want. So, the old Bob Ross sign say there'd be a heck of a little green dragon here. Now this this green will not be this bright. As you can see, as it's drying, as it's drying, it's getting darker. So sometimes you got to come back and hit it with a couple different coats, you know, to get enough green in there. Oops, no big blob on that one. So there we go. That's that's my green paint scheme right there. That's what you start off with. As you can see. This would be like the first coat, I'd hit it like this, right? The drier the brush, the better sometimes, as you can really see that texture get picked up there. You go different ways to get that, get that texture in there. So, <clears throat> next step in doing this is Hitting it with a little bit of yellow. Come on now. There we go. So you want this to dry. You would like this to dry between coats. Because sometimes you see how if you hit it again and it gets a little, a little more green. And you want certain areas to be a little greener than others. You hit those areas again. You know, on the, the scales, I always brush with the scale. Pick up a little more paint, hit certain areas, make them a little, that green pop just a little more. But it'll dry dark, a little bit darker than this. <clears throat> now when you paint this, you have to walk around it, do all different kinds of angles and stuff to make sure you're getting everything. Of course, this is a 3D object that missed this area. With a 3D object, like with horns, you're on this side of it, you'll paint all this, you think you're good. Walk around the other side, you missed over here, you missed over here. Of course, it's common sense, but after I paint, I'll walk around my piece even days after, and I'll see spots I missed. And that, uh, that's just, it's aggravating. Because, you know, you'll get a perfect blend going of what you like, and then you'll miss a spot, and you have to go back, and you're like, oh, I don't have any more of that paint. I like the way it looked, and you, sometimes you can't get it back just right. Oh, well. <clears throat> All right, so there's your basic green. This is your first coat of green, right? Let me put this brush over here. I'm used to getting the water. I need a paper towel to dry some of this off. You know, now fold up a paper towel to dry off my brushes. So, all right, let's go with uh, let's throw some red on this guy, and I'll get another paintbrush. And we'll paint some red up in here. I like this brush too. And the paintbrushes I use are nothing special. I just uh, get a packet. You know, this was like 10 bucks for like, maybe seven bucks for like eight of them at, at Michael's. And this was in a pack also at Michael's. This, these are a little better brushes than, than these other guys, but not by much. Okay, so just picking up some red here. This deep red's really nice. And same thing here, just kind of, just kind of hitting it. And then you gotta look which way as you scored it. If I 
got some dots and some scores, so go across the scores like this, so you're not getting the bristles inside there. You want to keep that, keep the black in there. And you see, I'm just kind of just hitting it real lightly. On this first co round, you'll you'll hit it and then see what sticks and what you like and what you don't like, and then you'll come back and you'll see areas you don't like and you want more color, less black, and then you can just go back and hit it again. I used to do it with washes, so I'd water down black and do a wash, but I've noticed with this cheap paint, the cheaper paint, if you hit that with any water, you're just going to just gonna rub it right off. So I went away from doing washes and then trying it this way, because this way the, the paint seemed to stick a lot better, and it doesn't rub off as easy. It's annoying when you paint an area, and you hit it with some watered down black like uh, I know Dan Reeder he waters down his black and puts it in there and I was doing that then I would go back with my paper towel and I rub it and it all the paint would come off and I'd be down to the white I didn't like that so I decided to paint it like this I think paint uh, I'm not using the same paint Dan Reeder does he uses house paint I believe he said indoor outdoor paint and that probably sticked a lot better than this but I didn't have that at the time I started doing this so I just stuck with this stuff but you can see you just kind of get some on your brush hit the areas and go back for more As you can see with this, this texture it looks real nice in here, like that. This stuff's pretty dry. We'll go back to the. Let's go back to the green. Let me dry, dry my brush off here. All right, this time. Time, let's pick up a little bit of this grab some of the some of that yellow in there a little lighter color you know, you get some yellow up in there hit that a little bit, a little bit lighter color there and it's really easy to do this just kind of brush it on there really you just want to catch those highlights give it that different different color, different texture. And I'll just kind of work my way around the dragon, work my way back and forth, back and forth as I go. See areas I want a little more yellow in. Little areas that I wanted to highlight like on the the face of the dragon on the, on the ridges of the face. I want them a lighter color while underneath the chin or whatnot. I want it to be a darker color. So you grab just a little more yellow and on that ridge, you hit it with a little more yellow and wipe that off. And you, you know, when you say, uh, I've done this before where I got too much yellow, right? And I'll hit an area and it's like, oh, that's way too much yellow right I'll just leave it dry or if I hit an area and I, and I got too much in there although that looks pretty good and say I've got too much you just come back wait till it dries and just hit get a little bit more green on there and just, just hit those areas with just a little more green to get rid of some of that yellow you didn't want
if these are still wet, you're just gonna blend it all in, so you gotta let it dry a little bit and come back to it. <clears throat> Same thing with the uh, the red here. I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of yellow. You gotta look at your color wheel. You lighten red with adding yellow. So there you go. Lighten that up with a little bit of yellow. If you want to darken it, uh, hit it with. Uh, oh shoot, I'm drawing a blank. I think. Throw a little, oh, if you want to mutate it, you hit it with green. Red and green together makes a darker color. So like this here, you mix those two together, you're gonna get a darker, a darker red or a darker green. That's how you make it darker. Go with the opposite color. If you want to make with the yellow in here. <coughs> this is basic. Basically all I do when paint these dragons is just through and building up some color see here I want some color down here Get some of this out of here So like this part, just red, no yellow. And I've added yellow to this. And then on here, sometimes I'll go out and get rid of some of this red. Let me get rid of some of the red here. If it's still wet, let me hit that. It's going to mix with that red. And this acrylic paint dries pretty quick, though. Like these areas, that's a little still too wet. But you don't want to hit everything with yellow, just the uh, certain areas that you want to highlight. said to <coughs> certain ridges on the face let's see let me take this thing so say I'm painting this guy here you know I want to hit the high the, the make if I'm doing the red this will be deep red but up here I'll hit it with the yellow make it like you know more yellow that's just a weird thing I sculpted Tips. I want the tips of a lot of these horns to be a lot lighter than the base. So,
All right, let's throw a little more yellow on here. Now I got yellow on my brush. I'm gonna paint this side some yellow. You know, doing that stomach plates here. And sometimes that uh, when I'm doing this, the yellow and the black just don't mesh very well. You gotta do a lot more to get the yellow to show. mache work so when you like well this part is of course a shop towel but when you wrinkle it up like that I love the texture it gives and this is the cloth mache over here it does the same thing but if you get too thick of uh, material it doesn't it doesn't give you the same texture but it comes out really really well I really like the um, I'm so happy that I came across Dan Reeder's book and started doing this. Making dragons makes me happy. <clears throat> okay, let's let that dry and then I'll hit it with a little bit more. Sometimes you go back with a, a little bit of yellow and white, a lighter yellow, and make that little yellow a little brighter. Okay, let's do my, uh, get some espresso out here, get another brush, we'll put these in the water, and keep them moist. Is this the deep one? Yeah, this is the dark one. So, for my black slash brown dragons, I start out with a dark brown like this, like this espresso here. Now this paint is a little more watery than these paints aren't watery, as you can tell, but these paints are a lot more watery. So sometimes you gotta put them on there and then, you know, hit a uh, paper towel to get some of that moisture out of there. But it's about the same, same technique here, just, just hitting them with that color. When it's a little more watery, it'll go into the crevices more on you. See, like that. You can come back and wipe it out with your finger. Yeah, this one's really watery. That's usually how I do the, the horns here. <coughs> So I'll hit them like this, get some color on them. We'll do this one a grayish color. Get that stuff to dry. Go back over it. Do this here too. This stuff's more watery, but when you're dry brushing, it goes a lot further, I think. Eventually, you'll get enough paint built up in here. When you do this, that you can just go back to this and get more paint because it's still wet. I was wondering how long this video would take me waiting for paint to dry, but 
if you go to a new area like this, it's not bad. Ooh, I didn't leave me any scales for blue. I'll paint this over blue. In this area blue, and I'll leave, do the brown here. This dries pretty quick too. in here with a little bit more yellow maybe a touch of green do a little more highlights here and that was really dry We'll leave some areas that are just green and do some more highlighted areas. Green looks good, right? Let's do over here some green. Get some of that main green back in here. Same thing with the red. Again. So that's a bit much, right? I went too far there. Hmm. back in there that'll orange it up a little bit go back grab some more red blend that in a little bit better there you go now it's not quite as bad go grab more of my yellow I said yellow
highlight a couple more areas a little more. It's one of those things where you just go as far as you want. If you don't want that to be like that, don't go that far. If you want it to be like that, just keep going. Eventually, you will get it to where you want. And if you go too far, just grab some red, dial it back. Now I know why Bob Ross would just sit there and paint talk, paint talk. Hmm. You're sitting in here alone doing this. Yeah, I think you sound like a moron doing, talking into this thing. But I know a lot of you guys asked me for this, so I figured I'd try and put something together for you. So there you go. This is my red dragon, basically. This is my green dragon. Let me finish up this guy. Alright, so <clears throat> this one was called... Which one did we grab? Oh, we we'll grab first. This was with a uh, espresso. So let me grab whatever this color is. Burnt sienna. I don't think I've used this one. It's been open, but I don't know how much I've used it. <clears throat> and I like to just use matte on these. Some of these, when I picked them up, I grabbed satin for some reason. I don't know. I just use it anyway because I already bought it. Oh, this one's a little thicker. This one's a little better that off though all right let's go in here hit some of this make it a little lighter when you first hit it you're like ooh that pops I like that but when it dries it dries darker it's gonna be darker than this here we go I was gonna make some of these blue right so You don't always hit all the areas that you just painted. You want some of that other color to show through also. So, just hit some areas, not all. Leave some dark, some lighter. The way you see the different colored gradients in there. Make this area a little lighter. Here we go. As I said, why do it black primer and just paint on top? See this area, they just look like shadow. It's shadow. It's not white. It's not just red. You didn't have to wash it. It's already washed. It's already dark. That's what I like about that. Sometimes I hit it just too much color. Then I got to go back and do a wash anyway. It just depends on the area. A lot of times the uh, sails on the dragon, I got to go back and do a wash because those are they're pretty flat. So when you do the sail, picked up all the color, then now you got to go back and do a wash on it. All right, there we go. There's your brownish dragon. And then we'll go in with some khaki over top of that, maybe some flesh color, and we just keep lighting it up and lighting it up. All right, so let's go with, grab some blue here. I need to get some blue in this kind of paint. All right, brush. All right, we're gonna do some blue on this area here. Um, actually, we wanted the darker blue, didn't we? All right, let's do the. Let's start with this darker blue. This one's satin too. Darn it! Oh well. Get some, get some color on there, and then brush a lot of it out. When you're painting it over to black here, it 
will not be as blue when it dries. It'll darken up, as you've seen with all this other stuff. that dry we'll mess with over here Continue a little bit with this yellow. Shoot, got some green in it. Oh well. And I don't know how you guys paint, but I get paint. Things I shouldn't get paint on a lot. I do a lot of touch-ups. Very annoying. Like, oh, I shouldn't touch that with the yellow. Oops. I sure did, didn't I? Darn it. For some of the, the spines like this, it depends on what color you're going with. If you're going with the yellow on the stomach, I wouldn't paint it black first. I would just go with the yellow and then wash it with a brown over top of that. It makes it look better. The yellow itself, with the black behind it, it's okay. I'd rather do it with a different color. But do some of this khaki, this color here. But if you're doing it like a cream color or white, better to do it over the black. I think it comes out better. Should have went with a darker color first on this one, but I, I had to cack you out. Figure I'd go for it. I kind of don't like that. I may hit it with a darker color over top. Anyway. Should have gone with a golden brown before khaki. Uh, basically, when I do this, I just get a bunch of different colors. Sometimes mix them together, find a color I want, and then go with it. And that's what a lot of this is. comes out with something you don't like, of course just paint over it. Done that a lot too. That's too much. I need darker.
Nope, I don't like that. Well, not on what that bone dragon I have. This is what I did on the tips of the spines. I went with this lighter color, but I'm not really liking what it's looking like on this. I guess it's all right. Sometimes you just gotta keep at it till you get something you like. But yeah, if you're doing a brown dragon, I guess you can do it this way. I don't like it though. So I'm going to just go with it. Sometimes if the shadows are a little too harsh, you just got to go in and hit them and tone them down a little bit, like that. color you don't like lighten with yellow Sometimes I just grab two colors that aren't similar and throw them together and see what I come up with. There's really no rhyme or reason to some of the stuff I do. That's the, this doing this is the hardest part for me of the whole dragon. Oh, looks like I picked up a, some tan in that and made it even lighter. Look at that. figuring out what color to paint these things unless somebody ahead of time says I want a white dragon sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna do it's kind of stressful for me <clears throat> maybe not stressful but I sit there and think and think about what I'm gonna do with it I think I picked up You can choose where you want those, that really, really light area. I don't want it everywhere, I just want it in different areas. 
Uh, all right, so well, we wanted to, uh, I do have a, this, is, this one's called pavement. Did I use this one? This is a grayish color. Turn it over here. If I want to keep the, the horns black, black with just a little bit of white in it or I like this pavement color I'm running out of plate space I'll use this over here wipe some of that off it's just a little bit different than black I don't know if you can see that or not I'm gonna hit it with pavement first I do think I used pavement black dragon stuff and put some over here what it would look like it would need this I don't like this side I would blacken that in again and start over I don't like that My brush was too wet when I hit this. I missed all the lines. Uh, okay, well, you can basically, oh, you know what? about that on here's my the metallic colors I have this metallic blue uh, I don't know if I shook that up enough there we go that's better this metallic blue uh, this metallic green Dragons, I've taken this metallic color and just, just hit it after it's done. The water dragon, you want them to look glistening. Do a couple glistening scales there. yellow still kind of shows through but you can see the shine hitting it in certain kind of areas get a little bit of shine on it there's also some uh, I do have some that you can add the metallic to any paint you have so you can add it the what was it liquidex sells the uh, metallic stuff that you can add oh, okay. to make it look like this there you go uh, do a little blue over here too the other thing I did was the blue dragon like that
glossy on top. Um, This was that last color I put on that bone dragon. Get the bonish color to show up. It's a flesh color, sorry. I used, this is flesh. best bristles for dry brushing are ones like this. They're a little everywhere and then you can really spread that around. Okay, so this came out good. This came out good. Yeah, I'm starting to like this a little better. This came out good. This is okay. I don't like that. This not good. But basically, that's all I do to paint these dragons. It's pretty much just that. Start out with black, throw some color on there, and then lighten it up as you go. And then you can throw some some glistening effects on there. This looks really nice. This would be a nice dragon here. A nice sparkly blue. But yeah, you want the, the weathered look. Um, the other thing I did was on uh, Black Dragon, on like the Drogon Black Dragon, <clears throat> the tips of his uh, scales are like this. A little darker than this, not as bright. But I did do a red wash. Um, let me show you real quick what I mean. So if you take your red, uh, which is the brown brush, I think this was their yellow red brush here, and I'll use this guy. say do a wash it's talking about watering it down really a whole lot and then painting your wash in there right I drove on his skin like in between red color in between the scales but you wanted that red to stay in there so in between the black you did a red wash like that so you can get that red down in there <coughs> let it dry and then come back over top of that and paint your scales so let's say I don't like that, it's way too red. Let's 
still too too wet. It's got to dry. But the other thing I did is um, you can dry brush with black on these things also. Not a whole lot of black. Come back over top of them and put the black. So like a lava dragon. I did the lava dragon in between was uh, yellow. I painted him yellow first and then came back and uh, did this technique with uh, <coughs> uh, yellow, then red, then over top of that I hit it with the black like this to make the scale look like it was ash, charcoal. So you hit it with the darker and darker black. So it looks like it's been burnt. It comes out pretty good. At least I like the way that dragon came out. My wife wasn't too happy with it. She didn't like it as much as I did. So it made it look too burnt. Well, sometimes that happens. Anyway, I guess we'll end this video. This is my basic painting techniques for what I do for my dragons. Now, this may not be what you're supposed to do for painting, but this is what I do for painting. And I think uh, my dragons come out pretty good. Uh, I do, I do, I do enjoy the. Uh, I'm probably going to cut this out because I don't know what I want to say. Anyway, I do like the way they come out. They look pretty realistic to me, and I like the colors. And I do like how I keep that, the black up in there. I don't, I like the, the color variation, and I like the shadows. I don't like white showing through. Well, this horn came out pretty good. On this one... I would uh, I would hit the tip with that and go just white over top of that and just highlight it a little more. Just brush some white on there. This one this one don't look too bad. It's a bit much through here, but it came it came out okay. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me take the camera off of this thing and get a closer look on here. See how it came out. Yeah, you get a good view of the how cool that looks, I guess. With the highlighting of the you can see how the light's hitting here because I put the metallic metallic. There's no metallic here. It's not really shiny. It's metallic in through here and in through here. But this horn came out alright. As I said, not so much through there. This is a mess. I don't like that. <laughs> I would definitely have to repaint that. This area with the wash. I was just that's just an example of how to do it. So it's still red under there. It's still wet. I hit it with black on top. And some yellow make it look like it's uh, lava. But yeah. Um, definitely definitely repaint that but basically I just for for the, the that it would be basically the way I did this you know you just use your tans and whites and whatever and lighten it up this is okay as I said if you're gonna do a yellow stomach yellow over top of black doesn't come out very well I've done it you have to do quite a few coats if I had done more coats of this it'd probably be a little better but one coat, two, it's not bad. But yeah, you just gotta practice at it and do it the way you feel like you like it. You got to do two different kinds of greens. This is the way I did my green dragon. <clears throat> the first green dragon I did, the water dragon, and this is uh, the latest dragon I did more like this with the yellows. But, well, there you go. And that's how, and that's how you do that.
And so here you go. Variety of dragons. Um, I don't think I missed a color dragon. Uh, I guess the white dragon. If you didn't do white, I would I would not uh, prime it black to do white. Uh, the way I did my white dragons, I painted it white and did a blue wash using a dark bluish color. Use a blue wash over top of the, the white and then go back and dry brush white over top of the blue. That came out nice. I did like that one. All right, well, well, there you go. Okay, this is take two of this. Uh, first time I cut myself off about here. Never do a whole video without making sure you're in the frame. So I think I'm in there now, hopefully. Okay. Um, so basically this, this was a, uh, uh, this is my painting tutorial for, I've covered up pretty much all the types of dragons I've painted, the green, red, blue, black, blackish brown bone. Uh, I haven't done a white dragon because I don't have enough room. Plus, I primed it all in black. When I do a white, when I do a white dragon, I wouldn't prime it in black. I would leave it white. You could, I guess. Anyway, these are the basic techniques I use to paint all my stuff. Whether it's the smaller polymer clay things or it's the larger things, I use pretty much the same technique. Um, I just find it easier for me, and I like the result. That's the only reason I do it. I uh, I started uh, painting kind of like this. I used to paint the little tiny Warhammer miniatures. I painted some of those and those are the kinds of the techniques that kind of stuck with me to when I go through and do these kinds of things. So um, I didn't take art. I took a couple art classes in college, but I didn't get into any painting classes. This is kind of a, the way I learned how to do it for me and just, just how I figured it out. Um, the other one that I didn't cover was how to paint one like this, uh, Lava Dragon. Uh, this guy did not prime in black first. I painted him yellow first, total yellow. Looked really stupid, total yellow. Um, I didn't like it all yellow, but yellow. Then the same way I painted this, painted him yellow, and then over top of that did some orange, then some red and the black over top of that. And of course, all the paints I use, they're relatively cheap. They're, um, I think this is like four bucks at uh, Michael's. These guys are cheap. Some of these, some of the ones, the, um, the ones you get at Walmart, I uh, grabbed a couple of those colors. Some of those are only like 50 cents, but and then when you paint these on here, you know, when you, uh, I've noticed the dragons I didn't prime, when I painted on there, the paint could come off. But this paint uh, stays on there pretty good after, you know, hitting with some good primer. Um, I don't have my primer in here. I just bought the primer at Michael's. It was like seven bucks for the bottle of primer. And I always buy the black one. I guess you could do gray if you wanted. It's up to you, but uh, this is the black primer. It's called my black primer dragon painting technique. Let's call it that, I guess. Thank you guys for watching my videos. Uh, thank you for all the comments. Um, a lot of you guys like the dragons I make. Thank you for that. Um, I didn't start this process to um, make videos or anything. I started this process because I like making dragons. And I came across Dan Reeder's book and he showed me how to make dragons and I'll make more videos showing you my techniques that I learned along the way. But anything that Dan Reeder taught me, I think you should buy his book and go buy what he does because he was the master at it. So I'm um, also doing some videos for Palmer Clay. I have this guy I'm working on right now. I'm videoing the process of making him. I'll have a video as soon as I'm done with him. I have uh, this guy I started working on. I didn't know which one I want to do first, this one or that one. I asked you guys which one I should do on, on Instagram, and you guys said I should do that one first, the majority of you. 
but I'll do this guy next and then I have some more uh, quite a few unfinished um, paper mache heads I still need to do so I have a lot to do um, working full-time and doing this I mean sometimes I don't get to do a whole lot of dragon stuff I need to be able to do more so thank you guys uh, if you like this leave a like if you want to see more like this uh, let me know in the comments what you think um, a lot of you guys have shown me the dragons that you guys are making. I think that's awesome. You guys are making some good stuff. So I, I really enjoy helping you. And I'm happy to know that what I'm doing is beneficial to you. So thanks, guys. And uh, see you next video.